Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. It's day five of our seven day Holland America Alaskan cruise. And this is a day that we have most been looking forward to. Ring Skagway on an unbelievable White Pass Rail excursion. In this jam packed episode, we'll be taking a ride on a tender boat and then a bus from Skagway into Canada and British Columbia and the Yukon. We'll be seeing spectacular scenery. We'll be stopping at the remote but charming town of Carcross and having a bite to eat and a decent coffee as well. We hop on the White Pass Scenic Railway and have one of the most scenic and unforgettable rail journeys I've ever taken. We ride past the spectacular Lake Bennett and we get to stop and walk around the ghost town that is Bennett. We jump back on the train and ride through the White Pass Summit and see spectacular vistas of valleys, waterfalls and lakes and just generally get blown away by the spectacular and sublime views that we see from the train. Join me on this unforgettable and not to be missed video. It was day five and port three of our seven day Alaskan cruise with Holland America. It was probably the day that I was most looking forward to. Winning. We had booked a long excursion, the White Pass Rail, Bennett Lake and Yukon Adventure. If you'd like to see a review of our experiences as a first time cruiser on Holland America's New Amsterdam, please check out the video in the Alaskan Cruise playlist. We left Juneau at about 10 p.m. the night before and traveled 104 miles or roughly 170 kilometers to Skagway overnight. We arrived at Skagway at around 7 a.m. We had breakfast and prepared for our long eight hour excursion. The excursion started at 7.30 a.m. so we didn't have a lot of time. The first surprise of the day was that we had to use tender boats. There'd been a rock slide a few days before we docked and it cut off pedestrian access from where we were docked to the rest of the port. So on it was to the tenders. This is sort of a, a mini exciting excursion in and of itself. All the passengers crammed on board for the short ride around the rock slide to the other side of the dock. This did take a little bit of time but it was very, very well coordinated. I think the crew worked like a well-oiled machine. Before long, we arrived at the dock, got off the little tender and walked our way up the gangways to our bus. This excursion was in two parts. The first part was a bus from Skagway to Carcross in Canada, stopping at a couple of different locations along the way. A distance of about 65 miles or 100 odd kilometers and a couple of hours of driving. We were going to drive from Alaska into the Yukon in Canada, therefore we needed our passports. Unfortunately, we didn't have any time to spend in Skagway apart from driving through the town in the bus. Um, it used to be a brothel when the miners were here, not anymore, sorry, I'm disappointing. But they do give tours still and give you like lots of information about what it used to be, what it was like for the miners. Um, so they do that. We've got the Arctic Brotherhood Hall to the left as well. This was kind of cool because it was formed as a way to become friends with other miners. It got really lonely in the winter time because it felt so cold, dark, and cold. <laughs> and so they would band together. They made this little brotherhood so they could have company in the winters. To our left, we got the Klondike Doughboy. They've got some delicious scones. And farther down is the Northern Lights Pizzeria. They have some yummy pizza and some other options as well. Uh, we got Bonanza Bar and Grill to the right. They sell the best fries I have ever had. They're super delicious. Our bus driver was charming and so informative. The excursion was quite expensive. For the two of us, it cost 628 Australian dollars or 429 US dollars in addition to a $200 credit that we got 
as part of the have it all package. That was part of the Holland America cruise and didn't take us long to get out of Skagway. Skagway is a small town. Its population is around 1,200 people. The Skagway River. It's the one. Our first stop was to survey the Captain William Moore Bridge. This is a asymmetrical suspension bridge. It uh, opened in 1976, but had to close 20 years later because of heavy traffic that damaged it. The other thing to note is it's located right near an earthquake fault. You can see that uh, jagged line to the right of the bridge. Interesting architecture and engineering. way back there. So that's the log cabin that, that used to be Canadian Customs. So that's where the Canadian Mountain Police would check your supplies and make sure you had enough to survive. Our final stop was a very high vantage point overlooking Bennett Lake. Bennett Lake has an elevation of 556 meters. The area is 96.8 square kilometers. It's a number of kilometers long. The average depth is nearly 62 meters. And an interesting fact, during the gold rush, the gold miners would build rafts to save time and effort by floating down the Bennett River and the Bennett Lake to reach the gold fields. Stunning views of Lake Bennett. We all hopped back on the bus and proceeded through fantastic scenery to Car Cross. It's really cool. To our left, actually to our left, you can see that lake out there. So that's like better. You can actually go like walk along the shores. It's a really sandy beach. It's really nice. So if you do want to go to like Bennett, feel free to. I've seen a lot of big towns. What a very big building. town. A population of um, the front of the city. It was an absolutely fantastic day. Bright blue skies and a temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius. We proceeded to have a look around town and grab the coffee at a local coffee shop. I was quite impressed. They even had gluten-free meals available. The coffee was fairly decent too. We sat in the lovely sun and enjoyed our snacks. We had just under an hour to wait until we needed to board the White Pass Rail train. So we decided to walk around the little town of Car Cross. There was a number of quaint, brightly coloured uh, shacks that sold trinkets and souvenirs and of course, fridge magnets. We saw the white rail train pull in to Car Cross. 
what I didn't capture was that someone almost got run over, which is hard to believe considering the train was travelling so slowly. The locomotive was diesel and looked fairly modern. The carriages, however, looked old, historic and original. Some of the rail cars date back to the late 1800s. Others are brand new, only being purchased in the last few years. Each of the rail cars are named after a famous lake in Canada. There's over 500 of these passenger cars all up. They even have one of the first steam locomotions that were used in the area, the Duchess. It was built in 1878 and decommissioned in 1931. We had just enough time left to walk on the old railway bridge. This is the point where the Bennett Lake meets the Nares Lake and River. It's strange how the two different coloured waters mingle into each other at this point. This is a view of the main train station. It's not even covered. This town is really only open during the summer months. I just couldn't imagine living here in the winter. It would be so cold and desolate. And this felt like, and certainly was, the most remote outback place that we'd visited on our journey. We all hopped on board the train and were shown to our reserved allocated seats. Then we took off. We crossed the rickety old bridge across the river and then nearly 70 kilometres across the White Pass back to Skagway. We were very excited. We were so looking forward to this railway journey. The highest point we would reach is the White Pass Summit at 2,888 feet or 880 metres. The journey by this rickety old train was certainly spectacular. crossed from Yukon into British Columbia and stopped at our only stop, Bennett. This is a ghost town that can only be reached by this railway line. Bennett was built to serve the miners during the gold rush in the late 1800s. When the White Pass and Yukon Railway was opened, it bypassed the town and led to its collapse. It's now a ghost town. No one at all lives here. We were given about 45 minutes to have a wander around this abandoned, spooky ghost town.
time and Bennett passed quite quickly. It was soon time to get on board for the most spectacular train journey I'm ever likely to have. This is the trip from Bennett through White Pass Summit, the Tunnel, Inspiration Point, Tunnel Mountain and Bridal Veil vale Falls. And in case you're wondering, yes, that was a baby screaming in the background for most of the trip.
that was the most spectacular scenery on a train I've ever seen in my life. It was the highlight of the seven day cruise for sure. It was utterly spectacular, worth every cent in my opinion. It was quite a long queue waiting for the tender boats but we eventually got back onto the ship and sailed away to our next two destinations, Glacier Bay and College Fjord, before we docked at our final port in Whittier. I do hope you liked this video. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notify bell so you'll never miss another upcoming video. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying me a coffee or smashing that super thanks button. And look out for my next video, which will be Glacier Bay and College Fjord. Not to me missed spectacular places that we visited in the last couple of days of our cruise. Until next time, you take care and bye now. Thank you.